there are studies that show that a doe can get as much as 50% of her energy needs on a daily basis from her body fat. Um, that fat has about a 90 degree uh, time limit, uh, 90 month, I'm sorry, 90 day time limit on it. So about three months. Um, and that starts to run up in March is when that starts to run out. During winter, that fat, burning that fat is what's going to keep them warm um, and get them through this tougher time period. Now they still eat during winter, they're eating winter browse to supplement that, but the fat is critical. For bucks, which, you know, for them to go through the rut, many of them in the fall burn up a lot of that fat, you know, they've got to turn around as soon as the rut's over and pack as much of that back on as they can before winter comes. So this is one of the reasons why our organization really emphasizes habitat management. If you want to get into managing herd and population health, you've got to have high quality habitat, lots of forage, lots of browse available um, for deer to be able to rebound, for bucks to be able to rebound from the rut and make it through winter, but also for does to make it through winter. If winter drags out, you know, late in March and those fat reserves start to become depleted, um and spring is delayed or late uh, but they don't have enough winter browse then you know things can begin to get serious and you know winter mortality rates can start to creep up for both bucks and does that makes a lot of sense and it is it is quite interesting too um just walking around the woods up here i'm i'm in ohio uh I hunt kentucky ohio indiana etc and um, the amount of browse that you've got in August or July versus now is nuts, even November. And then you get to now, and there's just about anything out there that's brown. But you do see some little grasses and little sprouts that pop up. And, and it's very interesting because I've spoken uh, with some people that have talked about how this time of year, You'll have a few sunny days, a rain and a few sunny days, or a snow melt or whatever, and then a certain type of plant will just start to sprout and pop up in the ag fields or whatever, and then, boom, deer are out there just crushing it. It's very, very interesting how important the browse actually is. I still don't think the browse gets enough credit. And when I say browse, I'm, you know, for the most part, just talking about what everybody calls weeds. You know, everybody gets so obsessed with uh, you know, corn and, you know, all the ag, uh, the beans and, and all that. But um, I just feel like the, you know, the, the native plants are, are really where it's at because it seems like they provide a lot of nutrients and, and you know, just food in general, more food. Yes. Even. Um, Let's do some definitions here real quick that when I say browse, I'm going to differentiate that from forbs, which are broadleaf, you know, green plants. Okay. Um, winter browse, when we talk about that, what that means is um, the dormant twigs and buds of small shrubs, vines, small trees, um, but, the, you know, that kind of woody to semi-woody buds, ends, twigs, even leaves of trees, shrubs, and briars, and most of the vines out there. You know, it's it's dormant, it's not growing, but it's it's green, you know, it's, it's alive. Um, those buds and twigs are what deer rely on for the most part through winter. They eat it throughout the year, but I'm differentiating that from green leaf forbs, broadleaf forbs um, that they also use throughout the year, but which are, like you said, very scarce this time of year. So you'll find those, you know, that kind of winter browse, those dormant twigs and buds and things in old fields and young forest type cover. Picture like a mature hardwood forest that's sort of uh, canopied out. There's no shade reaching. It's nice and open under there. It's kind of place where we think, oh, this is you know, where I'd like to be when the acorns are falling. It's a good and open under there. But in a place like that in winter, there's not much to eat. There's nothing growing in the understory in a shady place like that. There's uh, no forbs uh, in spring and summer. There's no browse in winter because you don't have an, an understory layer of plants. So you find that in areas of, again, young forest, either forest that's been opened up somehow through management or through a storm or whatever, and some sunlight reach, is reaching the ground, old field habitat, 
edge habitat, edges of food plots, edges of roads, anywhere where some sun, 50% or more sunlight is reaching the ground during the day and producing young forest cover, that's where you're going to find high quality winter browse. Um, and it's that browse that, you know, it's not great. It's not high protein. It's not high energy, but deer will fill up on that in winter. And the digestive process of digesting that woody uh, browse actually produces heat. And when they combine that with the burning of body fat, that's how they get through winter. So they might fill up on what looks like, you know, a lot of poor forage to us, twigs and buds and, you know, the woody stems of briars and vines. Um, it's not clover, you know, it's not brassicas and it's not, you know, summer ragweed and pokeweed and the things that are high quality in spring and summer. It's fairly low quality, rough stuff, but it gets them through winter and it actually burns and produces heat when they digest it. So they're basically burning wood to make it through winter. Yeah, exactly. It's a That's good analogy. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Wow. God has a plan, man. That's that's uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, and I know I, I did I did want to ask you. Um, do you feel like stump sprouts are a factor this time of year? Like, let's say, for example, um, the thing in my head is like where you find a lot of beavers cutting down all those trees and everything and all those little trees. Do you feel like that's a thing this time of year, or do you feel like that's later? If they haven't already been eaten, in other words, if you cut off and made, and I love making, you know, uh, stump sprouts, stump forage, uh, some people call them mineral stumps, where you have cut off at the stump a tree that produces, that deer will eat when it, when it stump sprouts. And then the sprouts are only going to grow in during the growing season, spring, summer, into fall, and then they're going to go dormant. If deer, you know, they're high quality, because you're talking about a little sprout coming from an entire tree's root system. It's oh, getting wow. all the mineral input of that entire tree's root system, which is why deer researchers have called those mineral stumps. Um, and so they're very desirable and deer will browse them and be on them quickly as soon as they start growing. So that's why I say if they aren't eaten already, if those stump sprouts remain into winter, then yes, they are, again, desirable winter browse. They're, they're not green. The leaves are gone, but they are, are dormant twigs and buds that deer can reach. That's the key part is that it's within reach of deer. You know, there's a lot of tree species out there that deer would browse um, if they could reach them. And sometimes like this time of year, we tell people if they say, oh, we're worried the deer don't have enough food, what should we do? The best thing to do, be, to do would be to provide them with more of what they would naturally eat, which is that woody twigs and, and buds and browse. And so if there's a tree out there that you could tip over and put it within reach of deer, they will browse those limbs, branches, and buds when they can reach them. 